President Trump and Joe Biden face off in their second and final debate Thursday night. Both candidates will have their microphones cut during their opponents' initial answers in each of the 15-minute segments, meaning there will now be four minutes of uninterrupted time split between candidates and 11 minutes left for exchanges between the candidates. The president reacted to that news this morning. Well, I think the whole thing is crazy. This commission, I had problems with them four years ago where they uh, stifled out my mic. But I do it anyway. I mean, I do it anyway. But this is the way it is. It's so set up. All right, joining me now is the chairman of the Commission on Presidential Debates, Frank Ferencop. He was also the chairman of the Republican National Committee from 1983 to 1989 under President Ronald Reagan. Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate your time. Sir, let me get your thoughts on something your successor as RNC chair, Ronna McDaniel, is saying and accusing the commission of, which is election interference. Those are her words, not mine. What is your response to the president and the chair of the RNC saying also that this is a setup? Well, you know, we've been doing this uh, with the commission for over 30 years. We've done over 30 of the general election, presidential and vice presidential debates. We've never had a cycle like this one. First of all, the president this morning and some of his uh, people said that this was supposed to be a foreign policy debate and said we somehow changed the rules. Not the case. It was never to be a foreign policy uh, focus. We, I asked them to go back and look at the debate in 20, 2016. Both of the debates, Lester Holt did the first one. Uh, Chris Wallace did the last one, and there was no focus on foreign policy for one and domestic on the other. So the debate people uh, at, the, at the Trump organization knew that there was no focus on foreign policy. Now, whether they told the president or not, uh, I can't say. Now, with regard to the microphones, they both parties agreed before the first debate and also agreed again for the second that when we start the six minutes uh, or the 15 minute segments, that the first four minutes are divided into two minutes for each candidate without interruption. As you, if you watch the first debate, you're easy to see that those rules were not followed, even though they'd agreed to it. So all the commission has done is not create a new rule. We didn't touch the rules. All we did is put in a situation where if someone is interrupting, they won't be allowed to interrupt. So when, for example, if uh, President Trump is the first one to go forward, he will speak for two minutes without interruption, and Joe Biden's microphone will be turned off during that period of time. When the president finishes and Joe Biden starts his two minutes, the, the president's microphone goes off. But once they both have completed their two minutes, then the microphones are on for the rest of the debate for that section. So the allegations that are there are just false. They're not true. Uh, it's not the way things happen. And uh, we're going forward, uh, as we've said, and uh, the president has agreed to debate we're yet to hear for definitively from the Biden campaign, but we're hopefully looking forward to having a good debate, a little bit more controlled, a little more civility uh, when we get to Nashville Thursday. Let me just be, uh, just ask you really quickly, in your experience in doing this, have you ever come under such attack by an incumbent president who was participating in a debate the way that they have? Have you ever experienced anything like this? Have you seen anything like this or heard anything like this about the credibility and the integrity of the debates the way we have? Well, not, not like this, but okay. we always say incumbent presidents, as a rule, don't want to debate if they can avoid it. Right. I mean, it's just something. So they've always, we've always faced some criticism, but not like this. And I, I was also really upset about the criticism that they've laid on Kristen Welker, who is going to be the moderator for the final debate. Right. Yeah, we'll because get to that. In, the time, we'll, yeah, we're going to get to that in just a second. At the time she was named. Yes, go ahead. Is it, sorry, yeah, we're going to get to that in just a second because I just want to finish up. Okay, I want right, to sure. button up a point that you were talking about, uh, and that kind of goes right. back to the first debate. It sounds like you're saying this time around, you're not changing the rules. You're just going to enforce the rules. And the rules were very Correct. clear, as you mentioned, which was that uh, you're not supposed to interrupt. Last first debate, which is the only one that has happened, President Trump interrupted Biden uh, 72 times. Biden interrupted the president only 22 times. In all honesty, in all fairness, isn't this new muting policy simply a way to get President Trump to abide by the rules. No, we're not doing it just based on President Trump. We're basing it on both candidates. Uh, we, we are nonpartisan. We're doing something that we think is in the best interest of the, of the American people to get some order in this debate that hopefully enforce the rules so that they can hear the candidates without interruption and get to learn where they are on these issues that are so important going into this election.
You brought up the issue of Kristen Welker. We have the president, once again, our colleague here, being attacked on a regular basis by the president and his media echo chamber, if you will. Do you think that is acceptable that the president, the sitting president, is attacking the debate moderator like that and is also egging on uh, members of the, the media echo chamber that support him? Well, let me say this. When we, when we name Kristen uh, to be the moderator uh, for the final debate, uh, and when she posted the six issues that she was going to cover, uh, Jason Miller, who's one of the most senior advisors to the campaign, went on another network's show, and he said this, I have a very high opinion of Kristen Welker. I think she's going to do an excellent job as the moderator for the third debate. I think she's a journalist who's very fair in her approach, and I think that she'll be a very good choice for this third debate. Now, suddenly, as we get one week or a couple of days from the debate, uh, th th their story has changed. I think it's unfair. I think Kristen's put, you know, being put through the ringer here very undeservedly. And, uh, but she's taking it well. I talked to her yesterday, uh, and she's ready to go, and I think she's going to do a great job and a fair job. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.